What is up guys, it is the one and only, and uh, today we got ourselves an Ancient Gear Gadget deck profile, uh, and so let's just get right into it. So first we play one Ancient Gear Golem, uh, we don't really play the other ones, uh, the other big ones, because in the end they're not really necessary, you only really play Golem, so you can go into your ultimate Ancient Gear Golem, uh, and we can talk about that later. Uh, we played Ancient Gear Knight. Uh, because he is a searchable level 4, so as you can probably see from the deck list, this is like a kind of a bit of a rank 4 turbo type of build. Uh, so it it just fits right in, because uh, it works real nice with uh, Ancient Gear Box. So it's a real good, uh, just one of to have there, just in case, you know, you uh, run out of targets to search with uh, Ancient Gear Box. Because when this deck goes off, it goes off. So, um... Next, we have three Ancient Gear Wyvern. So when it's normal or special, so which is why we run the gadgets, uh, you add a Ancient Gear card from your deck to your hand, uh, except for another copy of himself. But the thing is, you can't set cards for the rest of this turn. So um, it's kind of like a fair trade. You know, he's a free. He's pre pretty much like a Stratos, but he doesn't really get you. Uh, like he kind of hinders your play. But the thing is, is that he says for the rest of the turn, so make sure that you set your cards before you summon him that turn. Uh, so he's he, he's pretty good. Um, and, you know, he has the whole Ancient Gear Clause. If he attacks, your opponent can activate. Um, well, monsters your opponent controls can't activate their effects. I thought it was like everything, but it's just monsters, which is cool. So Gold and Silver Gadget have the exact same effect. Um, so when it's normal or special summon, you special summon level 4 machine type monster from your hand. And this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect, special summon one level 4 gadget monster from your deck, except for another copy of itself. So another copy of gold gadget, or another copy of silver gadget. Gold gadget obviously has more attack, so you're probably going to want to see it more often than you want to see silver. But silver does the exact same thing, as I said before. So, you know, just having both of them, and just, uh... Uh, just making sure that you know you get into your place as quick as possible is more important than having 200 more attack. And, uh, and but silver has 200 more defense, which is kind of silly. Okay, so ancient gear gadget. This is really where we get into the whole play of the deck, right? Because it, the fact that this card is an ancient gear and a gadget is kind of what ties this deck together. Uh, because he has 500 attack. So, which is why you see these machine dupes at the bottom here. And uh, his effect is crazy. If you pull him off with machine dupe, it is absolutely amazing. So, when he's normal or special summoned, you declare one card type, monster spell or trap. And this turn, if a monster you control attacks, so any monster um, you control attacks, your opponent cannot activate cards of or and effects of that type until the end of the damage step. So, uh, once per turn, you declare the name of a gadget, and he becomes that gadget name. That's more for the big guys. It's not really for... That effect isn't relevant for right now. But, um, Ancient Gear Gadget, um, if you machine dupl him, uh, duplication him, you use the one that you normal summoned, or special summoned off of uh, one of your other gadgets. Uh, you call Monster, and then the two that you summoned off of machine dupe, one called Spell and one called Traps. And you can... You can kind of push for game that turn, because if you can OTK, then uh, it'll be pretty nice, because you can just go like, okay, you can't activate any monster spell or chats when I attack, so if I go into something like Lightning, like you can't Honest Me, you can't Honest Neos, which is something you may see a little more often now and then, you can't Quaking, you can't uh, use any of your battle traps, so you know, make sure, and so if you're going to face this deck too, Make sure that you use all your spells and trap cards beforehand uh, just to uh, rid yourself of any real confusion uh, that, may, that may just happen. Um, so next we have Ancient Gear Box. And what he does is when he's added from a deck or graveyard to your hand, except by drawing it, you add an Earth Machine type monster from your deck to your hand with 500 attack and slash or defense from your deck to your hand. 
uh, you can only use this effect of Angie Gearbox with return. So, you can't search another copy of himself. That would be nice if he did. But, um, pretty much, uh, you use Box to search your gadgets, and you use Box, uh, in case you already used all your gadgets, you use Box to search your Angie Gear Knight. He's, like, he's just here for that reason. Um, Box is really a, a real nice card because uh, when you get, because when you search it with Wyvern and then Box, um, you add Box and then Box searches you your uh, Ancient Gear Gadget or Ancient Gear Knight, then uh, that's pretty much a free fusion summon right there if you have a Power Bond or um, if you have Hunting Hound on the field. It's kind of like a free fusion summon. So it's a, so it's a real nice combo. And uh, he also has 500 attack, so if he gets summoned, he can also be machine duplicationed. Um, and it's a, it's a real nice touch to the deck. I do wish more Ancient Gear monsters, or just monsters in general, uh, fit his uh, search clause of 500 attack or defense uh, Earth Machines. Because um, if like all the Ancient Gears fit that category, I think this would be a whole lot better. Because this deck would be amazing. Because like Wyvern, you could search Box and Box search Wyvern. That would have been amazing. But you know, um, I, I still think it's a pretty amazing card. And uh, it works great. So next we have uh, Ancient Gear Hunting Hound. And uh, here's where we get into a little bit of a chain burn type of build. So uh, it discard normal summon, inflicts 600 damage to your opponent. So you know, if he's normal and uh, your opponent has less than 600, you know, you, you just normal summon him for game. They can't strike you because they would lose anyway. Um, and if this card attacks, your opponent can activate anything, uh, spells or traps until the end of the damage step. That's cool. Uh, so what he does is once per turn, you can fusion summon an ancient gear monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. So wh while he's face up on the field, he's a polymerization. And um, pretty much you just activate his effect, you fusion summon any Ancient Gear fusion monster. And that is pretty great, considering the fact that A, he can be searched, and B, he's a level 3. You know, if he was like a higher level monster, he would be kind of bad. But it's the fact that he's level 3 that kind of makes it all work together. And, you know, it would have been better if he was level 4. But since he's going to be, you're only going to normal summon him if you have the means to fusion. So... Um, being level 3 doesn't really matter that much, but it would have been nice if he was still level 4 anyway, to like synergize with the deck. Um, but yeah, uh, he, he goes into, um, your Angel Gear Fusions real fast, so if you, like, draw him first turn, it's not even that big of a deal, because once you get another Angel Gear monster, it's like, you're, you're just gonna, like, go crazy. So, one maxi, maxi is still good this format. It's no real explanation is needed, but you know, it's, it's, it's just a maxi. Uh, so, triple instant fusion. Um, you, you may notice I'm only running one Norden. Uh, I, I don't really think it's a uh, triple is necessary because, you know, if you get like two in one hand, you know, like the second one's going to be useless. Um, but you do want to see Norton as fast as possible. It is a rank four build, so you know it is something that you just want to consider. It's more, it's really OTK based, and um, if you get a dead instant fusion, I honestly don't know what you would do with it. Uh, you could probably set it as a bluff. That's that's the best thing you can do with, with a dead instant fusion. Um, but honestly, your monsters are going to be doing all the work. So you know, once you pull that first instant fusion, just you know, hope and pray you're opponent doesn't break your board because you know the others the others are going to be useless but if you do pull off a digusto emerald then you can use your second one to bring to summon norton again so that is something to consider uh overload fusion is here strictly for ancient gear chaos giant and i think i'll go more into him later when uh we get to the extra deck uh one right geki triple power bond um so what power bond does is um you send from your hand or side of the field to the graveyard to summon a fusion. So it's a polymerization for a machine type fusion. And then you special summon uh, that fusion monster from your extra deck. And its attack is pretty much doubled because it gains attack equal to its original attack. So if it doesn't have a question mark as attack or if it doesn't like um, have an effect that really like, makes it gain attack automatically, 
then uh, you should be good because it, your monster is going to have double the attack um, it's normally supposed to have. So if you go, okay, so let's say I go gold gadget, wyvern, wyvern search box, box search gadget, right? So I have two monsters on board and uh, two and two ancient gears in hand. Um, if I activate power bond, I can go into the um, ancient gear howitzer, or it's called devil in OCG. Um, and it's going to be a 2,000 monster instead of 1,000. And I still have the means for a rank 4. So the fact that uh, this deck has a lot of searchers um, does like it, uh, does make it um, really easy to fusion summon. So, you know, triple power bond won't really brick that often because you, you do always have somewhere something along the way. And in case you don't draw into your fusion spells, you always have your hunting hound, which is why it's so damn good. Because it's a polymerization. A walking polymerization. The only problem is you have to normal summon it. But if it could work as a hand trap as well, that would have been like, oh my god, like top quality. But yeah, uh, the only real downside to power bond is that during the end phase, you have to take damage equal to the original attack of the monster at the time it was summoned. So in case original attack changes, doesn't matter. Um, if you summon your ultimate ancient gear golem, you're taking 44, but if you summon out howitzer, you're only taking a thousand. So it's really up to you how you want to use your power bond. Uh, ancient gear workshop, uh, he just brings back your ancient gears. Um, you don't have to play it, but playing it at one won't hurt, and wyvern can search it. So, you know, if you go wyvern, search a box, I mean, not box, search a workshop, and then add back a box, and then box, um, searches out um another ancient gear from your deck this is like just in case you machine duplication your ancient gear box and then you don't have any more boxes left um in your deck you can just uh search your workshop and then workshop and search box and then box can search something else um so yeah workshop is pretty nice at one and no need to play more than that if it's searched from deck obviously this would be a whole lot better but it's only grave to hand uh, machine dupe. I already told you guys all the combos with this. It's just uh, gadget and box. Um, is really what you play it for. You kind of want to see it as fast as possible, kind of, because um, you know it's some. It's one of those cards that you really like. Just uh, it kind of makes your board blow up. You know, it kind of gives you plays. So it's uh, it's it's really nice, really nice touch to the deck. I'm glad that they made these ancient gears 500 attack so they could work with machine dupe. And uh, they're searchable with each other, so it just synergizes real nice. Um, it's not top tier level broken, but it definitely is something to be definitely something nice to have because it's it's always like like you're never too far from a fusion or a rank four, so you know that's kind of your goal. You, you don't want to sit around stuck with your main deck. So double twin twister, uh, you know back row still a thing. Uh, you, you want to get those strikes before they can activate, and you want to get those D barriers. And D barriers can't hit that deck at this deck as hard because you know you always have the option of exceed and fusion. So you know if they call one, then you just have to wait for uh, for that one until next turn. But you know if they do end up calling like the one that you need more, then you know it, it still is a thing. Dimensional barrier is still pretty broken, so you know don't fret over it. Uh, double dimensional barrier, obviously, uh, that last argument I just made, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's still a broken card, um, and it stops a lot of decks. Uh, Ancient Gear Reborn, the best part about this card is the fact that you don't have to, like, it's like, it's kind of like a Call of the Haunted for Ancient Gear monsters when you control no monsters, but the thing is, is that it's once per turn. So once per turn, if you control no monsters, you special summon an ancient gear from grave. So it's kind of like it, it's actually real nice to have because it just you, you just keep bringing back your monsters and you just keep bringing them back, and you know you don't have to just worry about it being once only like call the haunted or something like that. So it's a real nice touch, and you know lastly double strike. So, uh, the reason why you play Overload Fusion is for your Chaos Giant. So, because he requires four Ancient Gear monsters, uh, rather than your other two, which require, like, two and three. 
Um, so he's unaffected by all spell and trap card effects, which is actually why he is so great. Um, <laughs> and uh, if he uh, if he's power bonded, um, he he probably won't get that double attack because he's unaffected. But um, I don't know exactly how the interaction works. I don't think he'll get it. But you know, it would have been nice if he would have been a nine thousand hitter that's unaffected by your opponent's spell and trap cards. Now. Your opponent's monsters can't activate their effects during the battle phase. So automatically, like this card in itself is a card you just want to get rid of. Because it is a mixture of Odd Eyes Meteor Burst and like just a Forbidden Lance. It's just a walking Forbidden Lance. And so this card can attack all monsters your opponent controls uh, once each, I assume. And uh, if this card attacks a vintage monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the game ender because if you bring this card out, like it is so hard for you to lose. It's it's just crazy, and it's kind of why you want to play Overload Fusion because Overload Fusion is like once you get all this stuff in Grave, that's when um, his four engine gears in Grave just banished him. You bring out this guy and you know he's pretty lit. Although you can't use Overload Fusion for the other two fusions because they're not dark types, so. Just keep that in mind, but um, he this this guy is just absolutely broken, and I love him. Um, it's kind of the reason why you want to play this deck, but you know this deck does have a few more plays. He's kind of like your boss monster, and you know the the thing that you kind of work like you hope to achieve every game. So ultimate engineer golem. This guy's a little older, but um, he does require less material. So pretty much he just requires Ancient Gear Golem and two other Ancient Gear Monsters. So if you have an Ancient Gear Golem out and uh, just two other Ancient Gear Monsters in, uh, in your hand, you just fusion. Or if Ancient Gear Golem's in your hand and you have like a Ancient Gear on field, you summon out a, a hunting, uh, what is it called? Hunting Hound. And uh, you have Ancient Gear Golem in hand and another Ancient Gear in hand. It's a free Ange Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem. So he gets to pierce, um, and when he attacks, your opponent can't activate spell traps until the end of the damage step. Simple enough. 44 hitter. He really isn't bad for what he does. And when he's destroyed, uh, you special summon an Ancient Gear Golem from your graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions. But if you didn't know, Ancient Gear Golem cannot be special summoned like as a condition. But um, you know, usually this this deck kind of breaks that rule. So, you know, if you have Inch of Your Golem uh, in your grave after this guy is destroyed, so in the case that there is no Macro, Cosmos, or Doc Law on the field, you get your Inch of Your Golem back when this guy's destroyed. And Inch of Your Golem is himself a 3,000 both ways uh, attack and defense, so it is pretty strong. Um, so, yeah. After that, we got double Ancient Gear Howitzer, and this is kind of the, the go-to guy for the deck, because let me tell you why. He is unaffected by everything else. Like, it is like it is not even, um, like, up to debate that him being unaffected by other card effects is absolutely amazing. Actually... I remember playing this guy, right? I, I was I, I was playtesting the deck. I used Power Bond to summon him, and this guy had 2,000 attack. So that means um, if you Power Bond into your Chaos Giant, it just might have 9,000 attack. I don't know how the interaction works. But if you could Power Bond into a 9,000 hitter Chaos Giant, um, I, I think this, <laughs> this is... Yeah, you, you're definitely going to win that match. I, I'm, I'm telling you, or that, that singular game. If you power bond into a 9,000 hitter Chaos Giant. But anyway, so during your main phase, you can inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent. So understand, this guy is unaffected by other card effects. So, and he's a fusion. So if they don't negate the fusion spell, they can't solemn strike him, they can't bottomless him, they can't do any of this to him. Uh, they can't quaking, they can't floodgate, they can't they, they can't touch him except by battle. Or by kaiju. You know, kaijus. Kaijus are a thing. Spear mode. Put that sack on the field. So, you know, he inflicts damage. So, it, the longer he stays on the field, the more of a threat he is to your opponent. So, your opponent is going to want to get rid of this card. 
And here's where this card becomes so great. So great. Like, I cannot emphasize how much I really like this card. If this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you special summon an Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So when he's destroyed by battle, he special summons any Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring summoning conditions. So Ancient Gear Golem, Ancient Gear Wyvern, uh, Hunting Hound, in case you have uh, the proper means to fusion summon, but I, I would just get Wyvern anyway. I, I think just Wyvern or Golem would be a good choice. Uh, Golem, because it's 3,000 both ways, and uh, it it's pretty strong. But um, if you had, and if you draw into Golem and you had a way to make uh, Howitzer, then you know you you would probably just make um, Ancient Ge Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem uh, first turn rather than Howitzer. If you if you draw into Golem, but if you don't draw into him, then Howitzer gets it for you. And I think that's the best part of Howitzer. It's like he inflicts damage. He he really forces your opponent to get rid of him. Like he really has a presence on the board. And then, like, once he leaves, he's like, okay, let me just bring out this 3,000 hitter from the deck. And, you know, it kind of that's why it kind of works with Olo Fusion, because at that point, you'd have uh, three Ancient Gear monsters in Grave and an Ancient Gear Golem from Howitzer getting destroyed. So, automatically, you have a setup Chaos Giant if you drew into Overload Fusion. So, you know, yeah, I, I do really like the combos in this deck. And uh, it, it definitely is a, a, a fun deck uh, to <laughs> to play. So, you know, I would suggest, you know, like uh, looking into this deck and trying it out for yourself. Because this deck is definitely something I think everybody should try. Um, so, you, you uh, one Norton, obviously. And you look at the Exceeds here. I do have a number 38. Um, I, I do, I may only have one Golem in deck, but uh, Howitzer is also a level 8. And um, Ancient Gear Reborn is a thing. So um, it's it's kind of more of a just-in-case type of thing. But um, I don't think you're ever going to summon it. And then your rank 4s, uh, the Utopia package, uh, Gear Gigant, Gear Gigant, which also uh, triggers your Ancient Gear box to search your gadget. And if you have a Power Bond or a, or a Hunting Hound on field, uh, then you can fusion summon after that because box will just search you another ancient gear monster So it works nice uh, Iron train wolf uh, Kind of just a more situational gear gigant except you know he uh, gets to attack directly Or he lets any machine monster attack directly So um, if you bring out one of your 9,000 hitter chaos giant and then still have the means to have an iron wolf on the field um, that's when you know that you're absolutely lit. Like, it's just 9,000 directly. Um, and your opponent can't really touch this guy. Uh, so, 101, uh, Castell, Gaga, Samurai, and Emerald, just for the last four. Um, 101 is something more just... Uh, I, I think you could replace it for uh, the, the new Rank 4 Spider, uh, number 70, Deadly Sin. But um, if not... Then uh, I, I do think 101 is a good card by itself, but I, I, I would consider playing like Deadly Sin and like the rank ups for it um, in this deck if you feel like you have space. Like, you, I don't think you need two Chaos Giant, but I do think you need two Howitzer. You may not need number 38 as well, so that's already two cards. You can just put the Tarantula and the, uh, the, 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 big, the, the big 4000 Spider. I keep forgetting its name. If you, if you don't know about the uh, Death. Uh, number 70 deadly sin uh, look up uh, my previous video um, I have a short little discussion about it about the effect um, how the card can be used and my thoughts on it but yeah uh, I, I, this is the ancient gear gadget build uh, the Robbie Cole M Cole 40 build <laughs> uh, well, which Robbie is this is this gold Robbie silver Robbie blue Robbie red Robbie if you know, tell me in the comments. If you don't, I mean, if you made it this far, I, I, I like, I think it's surprising. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I don't, I don't really know if anybody watches the videos this far. But if you do, uh, I mean, I don't really like ask, asking for likes, but you know, maybe you can show a like. Maybe show just, just write a comment. You know, I don't even care if you like or not. Just, just write a comment telling me you made it to the end of the video. If you made it this far, you made it to the end of the video. 
Anyway, this was Nistro here. Uh, remember, uh, this is there's also another Ancient Gear um, deck that I'm uh, uploading a profile of, but that one is going to be more focused on the Ancient Gear itself and not just uh, the gadgets and like rank four spam. It's just going to be pure Ancient Gear. And um, I'm sure uh, you guys will enjoy the dual upload of uh, diversity as well, because you know there's always more than one way to play the same deck. Anyway, this was Nistro here. Nistro out. Peace.